Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. We are pleased to welcome you in our panel discussion. And the main topic is the role of insurance in the entrepreneurs' ventures. I should like to introduce to you our participants, our panelists, Alexander Lakshin, Director of the Department of the Personal uh, Insurance, Renaissance Group, and Maxim Milovanov, Vice President, Center of Cooperative Insurance, VSK. And Anton Kuprinov will join us shortly. He is he is the executive director of the foundation of the crediting of the small business of Moscow. So we will discuss what the insurance companies will uh, will offer to the entrepreneurs and what is the role of the insurance companies of the in the development of business. It is well known that. Uh, that in the developed market with the developed economies, there is a term. It's not a question about insurance for the major entrepreneurs that you have to insure your risks and you need to use insurance protection. Well, you know it from your childhood, but everybody knows it from their childhood and everybody is oriented, is well oriented in different programs. And if there are some challenges, they invite specialists, they invite brokers who help them to find the relative insurance programs. In my country, the market economy and the market of insurance is still at the initial stage. And in fact, the insurance market was launched in 2003 with the, with the development of the MTPL, with the mutual third party liability, when most of the people got introduced to this program. For many entrepreneurs, small and medium business, uh, MTPL became the first type of insurance which they were introduced to. And unfortunately, as our research shows, for many entrepreneurs, it, it became even the last type of insurance. I think that this situation should change. And we will ask our speakers, our participants of our discussion what we can offer, what insurance companies can offer to the entrepreneurs, what are the issues, why it creates a lack of confidence, a lack of understanding from entrepreneurs, and how can we dissolve any dangers. So the first question I should like to address to Mr. Alexander Lakshin and to ask him to tell about the personal insurance. Uh, first of all, it's voluntary medical insurance of the employees. There are different uh, programs, interesting programs, which are associated not only with insurance, but with providing of services, organization of medical treatment, management of health of the employees. Please tell us about it. Thank you very much. First of all, I should like to start with um, the fact that in my company, we have a big portfolio for voluntary medical insurance. And I should like to tell you what do we understand by a modern voluntary medical insurance of the employees and its role in the insurance of the employees. Nowadays, we have um, many new things. In our company, modern uh, insurance looks as follows. We can divide it into four parts. The major part, which is well known to many of you, it is the standard voluntary medical insurance and so insurance against accidents. I will enlist these parts and then I will talk about them separately. Then it is prevention, preventional options which include compulsory medical checkup. In my company, 
we also offer weeks and days of health and also a large project, a major project, which we are operating with in the last seven years. And now this project uh, is called Management of Health of the Employees. I would start with standard voluntary medical insurance programs. We have some risks, and these risks have to be insured. And uh, we use different grades. Each are departments of the companies. They use these programs, and they include different aspects, like uh, dentist services, like a uh, medical service, like an ambulance and hospitalization, uh, extreme urgent and planned hospitalization. So I would like to consider within this portfolio the voluntary medical insurance and insurance against accidents. Nowadays, we face the situation in the market when these two types of insurance are offered by insurance companies for the employees together in combination because each one adds the other. And not only against the accident, because in this case, the person loses the ability to work or it is even the fatal possibility of critical diseases or treatment in case of the accident. At this moment, we offer treatment within, oh, well, within the program against the accident. And also, it is the treatment of the critical diseases I'm not talking about payment, not monetary payment, but it is treatment in a hospital. We can collect these options differently depending on the level and status of the employee. And this is what we call a standard type of the voluntary medical insurance. All these options are available and you can obtain you can choose any package with different aspects. Also, currently, we have the possibility to offer preventional options. For example, an option in accordance with the decree 302, a periodical medical checkup, primary professional checkup, uh, which the employer has to fulfill. Everything is possible and it is done through the voluntary medical insurance and through the partners. Then our company offers preventional activities such as days of health, weeks of health. This option is interesting because it includes sub-options such as the personal doctor who is present at the office and who is dealing with the specific information. He is not only monitoring and not only receiving the patients in the office, but also he collects the information, he analyzes this information, and at the end of the year, he issues a health passport for any particular employee. And what we call a week of health, normally at the end of the end of the first year of insurance, we organize an activity, we do the marketing research, we do we provide some lectures, and also we provide medical checkups. We take the blood analysis, and uh, depending on the pathology, depending on the diseases which we manage to reveal in this particular office or in the enterprise, any amount of the services is possible, and in accordance with our agreement with the employer, we can propose different options. It is either uh, risk against stress or 
diabetes, obesity, cardio program, problems, and this is the only a primary stage for the next level of the preventional measures for management of the health of the employees. We offer these options and I would like to split them into several parts, into four parts. For example, management of the employee's health. This program is prepared individually for any employer, for any team of employees, and we work individually. In our company, we deal with this work for seven years, taking into consideration a, for, a vast foreign experience because this program is not new, it's not a novice. Uh, they exist abroad for 15 or 20 years. They are used effectively with lots of success, and there is a possibility to calculate financial benefits of these programs, first of all, based on the foreign, based on the foreign research and in accordance with the foreign statistics. But it would be enough to mention that for one, for one employee uh, with obesity, suffering of obesity, the expenditures of the employer will be by 20% more, and uh, the losses for a patient uh, with diabetes will be up to $3,640. With the current voluntary medical insurance, this option management of the employee's health is the only option which allows to bring the, to bring the money which employer <coughs> has spent for the social package. It is difficult to imagine a social package now without voluntary medical insurance. As for this program management of health, it consists of four parts. The first part represents auditing and um, research and revealing revealing of the health diseases then uh, there are special tests which have been which have which were worked out by special medical centers in psychology and then uh, there is an auditing a kind of an auditing uh, there are tests and these tests allow to split the personnel into the problematic zones or problematic areas. And then on the personal level or on the group level or on the level of the whole team of personnel, specifically individually, it is possible to work out a special methodology and to implement this methodology during one year. We've already launched these programs and they prove to be very effective. Uh, please tell us what are the key advantages? Probably you would not mention these programs because you understand that this is an advantage of an insurance company, but not every insurance company can offer such a complicated program, but what is the advantage of the voluntary medical insurance versus attachment to a specific clinic? Because it is also possible to attach people, employees to a specific clinic, a clinic. but what is the advantage for the employer? To my opinion, the advantage is visible and obvious, and the first advantage which is obvious, it's a wider insurance program in comparison with the programs uh, which were offered by clinics because they have lots of restrictions and um, different options uh, are not present there. Of course, the chain program offered by insurance companies is more interesting for the clients, for the patients, and they include more options, more aspects, more 
medical services. So the restriction is only is the capacity of the medical clinic and insurance companies, they have more possibilities. There is also another problem or another issue. Uh, it is the development of the clinic, which is interested to receive financial assistance. And in return, they have to, they, sometimes they prescribe a non-based, non-based uh, research and analysis. And insurance companies, they have medical structures, uh, works, uh, medical officers, doctors and medical officers, they work there, they have a vast experience and they deal with the technical expertise, with the research of statistics, and then they go on to the field and they work with primary documents, they work with the insured patient, and our insured patients, insured employees, they are more protected than those who are attached directly to the clinic. Uh, there are some standard uh, analysis, uh, there are some standard things like a um, uh, medical operator, you can go there, you can address there and receive a 24 hours help. There are doctors who are attached to each particular uh, team of personnel and they know the issues of these uh, personnel and people can can address these doctors and they can receive assistance in the clinics that have been determined in the profile clinics and which are specialized on in that or that disease so these are the main options do you have any tax loops uh, because you know that this is a very hard um, point. Yes, we do have some tax privileges and they are actively used by the companies. Again, if you compare them with clinics, they are equal. And I would say that in this connection, voluntary medical insurance is more effective, is a more effective structure which allows to organize medical treatment of the insured patient, patients. Of course, we would like to get more preferences from the state. And uh, I think we have to focus on the, the, I think that the governmental structures have to focus on the voluntary medical insurance. We have also to differentiate the voluntary medical insurance and compulsory medical insurance. Please tell us more about it, because these are two way types of insurance. One of them is not um, insurance in the proper sense of the word. Is it possible to add each other of them, or is it feasible on practice? Well, absolutely. Well, for the last uh, uh, two years, we've been actively debating a possibility to establish some synergy between the compulsory and uh, uh, insurance, uh, which is guaranteed to all uh, residents of the Russian Federation and voluntary medical insurance. So, but uh, uh, currently, uh, this uh, issue hasn't got further than discussions and uh, currently these two assurance time uh, types duplicate each other including financial load on an employer well it is clear that uh, unfortunately the quality of medical aid uh, and its accessibility uh, in uh, the compulsory medical insurance cannot meet the growing demands, especially in Moscow and St. Pete. As regards um, high quality medical care, uh, employees uh, have uh, a certain limited time resource and an employer uh, certainly is interested in uh, um, fast uh, recovery of uh, his em or her employee employer employees uh, because they need to work and so 
uh, well, um, fast and high quality medical care is needed. So it's not always possible in the framework of um, compulsory medical insurance and, and until uh, it is not uh, <clears throat> it's not enacted on the high level. Uh, with the prescription of the re responsibility of the medical insurer would be prescribed in terms of voluntary medical insurance. Uh, maybe it, uh, it, uh, such law will uh, specify specific diseases. Maybe there will be some uh, comments on the quality of uh, hospital wards uh, uh, or some other some other stuff. Uh, there isn't any legal uh, delineation of, of these two options, and very often they duplicate each other. So another issue now about the um, uh, voluntary insurance and its passing to the regions. In Moscow, there are quite a lot of clinics in St. Peter also. Uh, there is certain competition, uh, but uh, uh, voluntary medical insurance is uh, uh, just a w <clears throat> quite well recognized notion. And uh, in the province, the, well, normally there is only one uh, uh, clinic and one medical center. And uh, uh, what should be done and what is the pattern of the development of the voluntary medical insurance in provincial Russia? Uh, currently, uh, voluntary insurance and uh, medical centers, uh, which are at the level of the voluntary medical centers in Moscow or St. Pete, um, certainly are much higher. And uh, today we see um, a movement towards, uh, towards the regions. And the private business very often uh, is um, eager to start up uh, medical care centers of high quality and that would compete. So the development and enhancement of large private medical networks is going on not only in Moscow and St. Peter, but also in the provincial Russia. So I think that this expansion in medical care centers would continue. And some part of insurers um, would certainly support the idea of developing their own clinics, uh, maybe following some Western pattern, and uh, bring it, uh, bring them these clinics to the Russian regions. And I think that locally we are already ready to consume private medical services. Talking about some. Uh, smaller cities and more remote locations of this country. Uh, there's very often the same medical care centers, but uh, insurance and voluntary ins uh, insurers and voluntary insurance certainly have certain standards as regards to the service and medical aspects, and uh, thereby they um, have incentives to improve the quality of service. Thank you very much. This is the last question about voluntary insurance. There is an interesting phenomenon. So the corporative medical insurance uh, is much cheaper than uh, individual insurances. So certainly it's much more profitable to have a collective uh, voluntary insurance in medicine. So certainly, so the insurance uh, market as regards voluntary insurance hasn't matured as yet. And there is also a, a dimension of psychology and corporate uh, voluntary insurance is, uh, well, implies uh, the absence of anti-selection in a medical sense.
uh, physical uh, well, uh, individuals who buy this product, they buy it um, just uh, for or against a um, particular disease for a particular patient. And today, uh, the, pr uh, the prospects of uh, the voluntary medical insurance development is rather vague. In our, well, our company's portfolio, um, well, it counts for only 2% of individual buys of voluntary medical insurance. Thank you very much. Uh, there is another topic. Uh, insurance not of employees, but of uh, companies. Uh, so these are different types of risks, as the, such as related to property, to downtime, to you know, some uh, entrepreneurial or financial risks. And uh, would you talk about uh, uh, some, you know, interesting? Uh, would you talk about some interesting? Uh, aspects uh, in the Russian market in terms of that. Good afternoon, dear participants, and I would like to start uh, um, my talk about insurance, talking uh, about it in general terms. So we met in uh, 26, and I haven't seen global changes since that in this sector. So there is compulsory insurance. This could be collaterals or leasing operations or operations that are regulated by the government, compulsory insurance. Uh, last year, um, our company showed the following statistics. In November, we had a fire, and we paid 174 million rubles. In January, we had a fire, uh, and the uh, just timber plant uh, some to, uh, 200 uh, millions uh, were paid. In April, I, we had a fire in the production complex for semi-products. So we paid 2 billion, uh, 2.5 billion rubles. These are losses of entrepreneurs. And uh, well, insurance is an investment to successful business. Without it, uh, no civilized society would survive. This is a very good mechanism uh, to close your risks. And uh, certainly, these losses could uh, uh, lay on the uh, entrepreneur completely. But we have an insurance company. So um, first of all, this is a property insurance complex. Equipment uh, has it industrial facilities. Uh, this is a responsibility of transport companies with large fleets. Uh, these are the voluntary and compulsory medical insurances. So the whole list of services uh, which is existent in a big company. They all should be insured. Uh, so talking specifically, so what is a property complex? Uh, property or real estate. So it, in, it is composed of rather complex pro products such as uh, 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 interruptions in economic activity. It is a very complicated product and quite exotic. You know that uh, uh, business uh, to to let business uh, uh, also is becoming very popular here for food uh, for the food sector for chemical sector. Uh, this type of assurance is uh, really topical as regards our uh, transport vehicles. Uh, here, nine million of clients um, just. Uh, 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 let us ensure their vehicles and their transport fleets. Uh, well, certainly it is very important uh, uh, here to include the maintenance component. Most of insurers try to Uh, try to improve and modify the maintenance uh, component. Um, this is the on-site visit of a commissaire. This is their um, 
an assistance to uh, organizing the technical examination of a vehicle and so on and so forth. Uh, this is very important for the client. So uh, about voluntary medical insurance, this is a good tool uh, to uh, retain employee, empl employees and at large it is a civilized approach to the life ingredient of the overall enterprise so this uh, and compulsory medical insurance also <clears throat> critical as regards hazardous industrial facilities um, all those who operate uh, boiler houses, escalators, uh, uh, will, would understand how important it is for their businesses. These are facilities uh, uh, which are risky and uh, they uh, have to be insured. Uh, so our company has uh, been present in the market for 22 years. So the experience and the assurance of uh, uh, large transactions such as SMR and uh, uh, you, you will remember the Olympics. Uh, the insurance uh, coverage was very, very large, and a week before the Olympic Games, we see we saw our, an accident, so uh, a, a fire in a hotel complex, and the losses were covered very fast and effectively. So that's why we need insurance. So how to pick an insurer and how to pick an insurance program and or schemes. There are different truths, there are different programs uh, for many, many pages. Uh, what should an entrepreneur of a uh, no, no, a small business should uh, choose? What are the key positions? to dig out in the overall documents regarding insurance, talking about reliability. Uh, should, so you should first look to ratings of an insurer. And uh, uh, so the, categoriz the categorization is like with banks. So an entrepreneur may address for a um, loan and he looks to the reliability, not only to the rate. So the same story is about uh, insurance companies. So there are ratings, there are agencies, uh, or rank companies, uh, and uh, assigns a certain uh, reliability rating to each company. So this is important. And generally, you should look at the company's behavior in the payment market, you know. Uh, consumers always um, think uh, in the way of the premium, but for us, it is the most important factor to settle a problem. So certainly, uh, you should look to these factors in the internet, for example, and uh, uh, each company has its own rating. Uh, it, uh, every year, we prepare a report. You can read this report also in the web. And, uh, well, how to choose uh, insurance, an insurance product? Well, there are more than 100 um, insurance products in each uh, in insurance company. And once one insurer to the, um, uh, to, to the question, what can you do, says that we can insure a, a fly in a fly. Um, so the, we have an experienced, uh, we have experienced staff in every company who certainly would impose their services, but to try to get through your needs, uh, for example, if it is um, uh, deposit risk or it is a brand new enterprise where we need to look to uh, potential risks uh, where they can be accumulated and covered and how to uh, to design a, an individual program for an enterprise because there are absolutely non-model programs uh, and uh, insurers in this case tailor this their customer made uh, tailor these companies we have questions. You're welcome. Can you hear me? OK. I'm Sergey Nikolaev. I'm from the innovation sphere. Is it possible to ensure uh, venture high-risk projects of innovation top in, in startups? 
so uh, after a failure, for example, uh, it's kind of a joke, actually. And uh, do you think that it is possible to uh, uh, to look to the per to the prospects of hedge funds? First of all, in terms of a small or mi even micro business, uh, what is a, a tool set or a toolbox? Yes, so the first question was about uh, insurance of uh, venture business projects. They are of high risk. We all understand this, but uh, they could be a high margin rate. So do you have a special tool set, uh, toolbox for that? Uh, uh, do you have this? Uh, I know that this is available in the West. Uh, so are there companies who deal with uh, high risk um, company uh, insurance? So when uh, we look to the fact if it is possible to share or not. Uh, we have maybe some partially this look, although it is available in the West. So in uh, each case, so we need to elaborate on that. We need to look into a risk, to into a, a business uh, profile, and uh, uh, well, reinsurance if needed. Um, we is done through our European partners. So that's why we should look into every detail of a business and to maybe to develop a non-model uh, uh, program or product. Well, uh, well uh, during our break, we, we can talk it, uh, about it in a more detail. Well, I will, we've already forgot the second question. Uh, is there any perspective in Russia to organize hedge funds? Maybe it's not a typical decision uh, oriented for some niche businesses, but it's not a question for the insurance companies. But what is your opinion? Yes, of course it is possible, but everything is possible uh, which exists somewhere else. But this is for the future. This is a matter for the future. We can only dream of it. Is there, is there a possibility to have a kind of a forecast? No, it's not a question for the insurance company, but the, the answer is clear. Everything is possible, but this is not a matter for the insurance company. Um, another question. Vladislav, trade company Moscow. I have three questions. The first question, European companies, European insurance companies, they insure overdraft of the supplying companies, of the suppliers. I'm talking about the, wholes the, the wholesale companies. They work with small companies and they provide, they afford delay of payments. And insurance companies, they insure this delay of payments. I haven't found any programs, similar programs in Russia. Are there any perspective for development of this particular trend in Russia? I will ask a question and then another question will go after an answer. Yes, it's an interesting question. But when we talk about the European business, everybody understands that uh, what does it mean, European business, when we talk about uh, insurance of overdraft of the, in the Russian business. Statistics is not in favor of the insurance companies. The statistics of risks is maximum, and that's, that is why we are very watchful. We are very careful about this business. It's not a simple situation. Probably it will change, but I would say that 10 or 20 major companies uh, will work with it. Then second question, perspective of the Russian insurance market after uh, affiliation with the World Trade uh, Organization. Because European companies, they will also come to our market and will proportion of the Russian and European companies change in the market. And uh, 
can you talk about, about it on the short-term basis, on the long-term basis? I will answer this question, and maybe my colleagues will add. European insurance companies, they work in Russia for a long time, and some of them uh, will quit uh, to work in Russia because they are not capable to work in Russia and they will close. So affiliation with World Trade Organization is not uh, scaring us for us. And there will be no, there will be no massive launching of uh, different companies to the market. All those who wanted to come to the Russian market, they already did it. Either they succeeded or they work and they incur losses and they live at the financing by the owners. But the experience proved that in Russia, you have uh, to work with a Russian approach, with a Russian mentality for the Western companies. They, well, it's not, it's not possible. If we talk about the corporate insurance, they cannot attract clients. If we talk about the retail business, they attract customers, but they incur great losses because they spend a lot for attraction of the customers. Uh, well, insurance companies don't have to be scared because the situation will not change. I think market is complicated. What does it do? What the entrepreneur mean? What do we mean by entrepreneur? We have to work with entrepreneur. We have to build up a dialogue. We have to understand entrepreneurs. Losses for Western companies, they exceed the accessible minimum. And, but for the Russian companies, we don't see any dangers. And my third question, no, you, do you have any more questions or not? Good afternoon. I'm Kachalov Denis. I am a broker. And I want to ask a topical question. With regard to the new law 214 about the proportional participation in the construction, what is your opinion Opinion of insurance companies? Because the situation is not clear in the market. The similar situation was when insurance companies insured state contracts, governmental contracts, and then insurance companies quit their participation in this business because banks started to insure uh, state companies. And from now, many constructors, majority of constructors, those who only enter the market or those who cannot afford to become clients of companies of your level. They find great companies or they insure uh, apartments through brokers. For example, if I buy an apartment, I went to several times to the construction site and then understood that either the construction company will go bankrupt or uh, because for the, how the clients can protect them. Again, I will start to answer. In our uh, uh, agency, we, we organize the research, and there are three ways how to fulfill this law. Either it is a banking guarantee, but this is expensive, and not many can afford to buy a banking guarantee, especially if we are talking about uh, small construction companies. And then there is another insurance uh, way of insurance when all members of the community having paid a special fee will be insured. And I would say that this way is more in demand nowadays. We've asked most of the insurance companies, I mean, real universal insurance companies and major insurance companies, they do not work with this type of insurance because the risks are so high, they are catastrophic. And uh, I don't know how small companies work with this insurance. 
But I would say that big companies, they are very careful, and we have to think whether they will pay afterwards and where they will find money to pay, because the scale of construction, especially if uh, there are several resident houses are built or the whole district is built, the, the scale of responsibility is higher than all the assets combined together. And uh, consequently, uh, one risk case, it means minus one insurance companies. If we talk about uh, medium insurance companies, this is my opinion supported by the result of our research. But if you want to add, uh, do you want to add or not? During the break, before this session started, we spoke and being representative of the major insurance companies, I can tell you that no decision uh, has been taken. And none of the 20 major insurance companies decided to deal with this business. For the insurance community, it's not interesting because we are expecting a reply uh, for, for them the risks are clear, but the decision is not clear. There is a case when the insurance companies uh, leave the market, but it, this was not our aim uh, to work in the market for 20 years and then to bury our business. Nobody will deny, but 5 or 6 uh, percent uh, will stay, but for, not, for, not for everybody. There will be a kind of a segmentation, and also we are communicating and consulting with banks, and I am confident that within one month the decision will be taken, a kind of a decision. But out of ten, I can tell you that three companies will not deal with this business. Okay, thank you. We have one more topic to discuss. And I want to in give the floor to Mr. Anton Kuprinov. He is, uh, well, he's not dealing with the proper insurance, but uh, he's supporting small and medium business. Please tell us about your activity and what your foundation does and how you support the small business enterprises. Thank you. Good afternoon. I represent, I do not represent an insurance business, but we are a neighboring, a neighboring business. Uh, we have, uh, I represent insurance and we, there are, there is a simple, the single root of these two words in English. I will explain what I mean. A number of companies in their commercial activity, first of all, small business enterprises who are less transparent, uh, weaker, they are not capable to, uh, well, they are not attract. They are not attractive for the commercial banks, and without com credits, they cannot be developed. Therefore, there are some financial institutions which were established with the governmental help and with the purpose to help these enterprises to receive additional financing for commercial. Um, commercial banks. We can call it like an insurance coverage because the nature is the same, the economic nature is the same. But in this case, you do not insure the property against the risks, against the fire. But this is the risk of commercial activity, which means um, lack of capacity to fulfill the obligations in accordance with the crediting agreement. And so there are some um, institutions who work as insurance agencies and who provide this coverage as a guarantee, as a guarantee, as an authority for the banks. And banks, having received these uh, guarantees, for them, it is more simple to provide credits to a small business enterprise. And in, as in any country, support of the small business is a key point, and in our country, this is also a key point as well. 
then this is a well-developed and a very well-spread practice. In Russia, there are in more than 80 subjects of our federation, there, there are some, such foundations, and their main purpose is to provide, to assist to crediting and the total amount of financing which they helped to receive during the whole period of their existence is over 2 billion rubles. Uh, to 200,000, uh, 200, um, 200 billion rubles, 70 billion were received with the help of our foundation. We work with the government of Moscow. We have a department, and we work in the city of Moscow and in the new area of Moscow, in the new districts of Moscow. They work on the territorial principle, and their main purpose is to provide support uh, to the small business enterprises. For, uh, so far, multi, uh, small business enterprises, they are not multinationals, though they work internationally, they conclude international agreements, but they work locally. So now the main purpose is to help local business to survive hard times and to develop. It is not a secret that most of the small business enterprises do not have enough financing. For example, a bakery, they have a um, facility, they have ovens, they have counters, they have refrigerators, a small warehouse, but in order to develop, they need financial resources. And the only thing what they can offer in addition to their daily profit, it is the property. And um, if this is a rented facility, then they can offer their equipment. And probably the banks will not uh, will not accept this equipment as a guarantee for insurance if the bakery wants to buy a few new ovens or something else. And if the um, enterprise does not have enough property as a guarantee and the bank will refuse them, then they will go to our foundation and we can guarantee for them and ask the bank to give a credit to finance this enterprise. This is kind of a support. It's like an insurance pool for a certain amount of credit. And traditionally, foundations, they have assisted to receiving the financing. And they do not cover the whole amount of the credit because otherwise banks will be relaxed. And But in order to help banks to collect information about the client, uh, we, we assist them. And then the deal takes place. And what is extremely important here is that the Central Bank of Russia considers deals guaranteed by, by the foundation as a category of the second, uh, second class financing. And it improves significantly the position of the banks when they provide their reserves. And reserves are a matter of principle for the banks because they press on the capital of the banks. But now central bank is closely monitoring the assets of the bank. And central bank is uh, considering the possibility of the guarantee of the foundation will be considered as the first class financing, which will also improve, which will improve this crediting for the banks and consequently for the small, small business enterprises. We are a member of the European Association of these guarantee foundations, and we are the only Russian foundation we, who participates in this association. And we represent the country which is not a member of the European Union. Other foundations represent countries, members of the European Union, and our foundation has a, a ranking double plus 
uh, which is issued by the RADA agency. And we hope very much that it will, they will confirm our ranking after having analyzed uh, their, their survey. In total, during the existence of our foundation, we've issued guarantees for the amount of 33 billion rubles, and it allowed enterprises of Moscow to receive financing for the amount of 70 billion rubles. Average in the foundation guarantee 50% of the amount of credit of the client's debt, though we have different programs for different kinds of activity. Last year, we, we've issued guarantees for the amount of 7 billion rubles, which allowed to receive financing to our clients for the amount of 15 billion uh, rubles. We think that this is a worthy investment, the worthy contribution to the development of small business. Our capitalization is the largest in the country. And if we talk about the total overall capital of the guarantee foundations of the Russian Federation, our share is 20%. Our our guarantee capital is like 7 billion rubles, which is the largest in the country. We, we do not work directly with the clients. We work with our banks and partners, or you can call them insurers. And our bank partners, we have like 40 of them, and like 40, 30 banks are awaiting their queue in order to take part in this program. We are, um, well, we weigh very carefully all the um, circumstances when we select the banks to work with the small business enterprises. We evaluate their crediting portfolio. We see how they treat risks, how they check the clients. But uh, nevertheless, the main idea is that the foundation is not an independent crediting organization. It, uh, it carries its activity and takes the decisions based on the expertise of the banks. Um. And trust us in analysis and uh, loan dis uh, solutions. So banks uh, approach us so when the client has been already uh, uh, verified through the security services and passed through all credit and lending procedures, including the crediting committee. Some of other partner banks, uh, well, just to, uh, all of our partner bank banks, uh, uh, well, regard uh, our clients very seriously. And the level of uh, blue chips, and uh, they implement uh, uh, full size uh, credit analysis and uh, just uh, actually uh, zoom each, uh, um, each client and uh, don't use scarring programs for that. They do them themselves. And we are not a foundation which just uh, uh, gives a surety bonds and uh, um, helps improve uh, the situation with bank reserves, so we really pay um, compensation or according to our uh, contracts of uh, surety bonding. So last year it was more than 700 million rubles. So we also uh, just uh, analyze the application of banks for security bonds. They are very fast during three days. It's a, a record-breaking timeline. And uh, so we are very far the bank. We analyze it uh, across a uh, number of criteria. And I came to the foundation from the bank system, and I was uh, very impressed by such uh, timing because there are not so many banks who could make a decision on uh, on um, applica on applications for loans um, so fast. And um, the three Ds. So this is a competing. Uh, it is a very competing timeline. So who do we work with?
Uh, what criteria we use to pick our clients to the program? First of all, these are small businesses, those companies uh, for whom it is very hard to find uh, surety bonding and uh, uh, loans, so they can be just actually very good. They should be registered in the register of the small and medium enterprises of uh, the city of Moscow, and uh, they should have uh, existed uh, for six months. They shouldn't have any debts, uh, tax debts, and don't uh, just uh, break any uh, tax wars and credit wars. So uh, no, no uh, uh, bankruptcy procedures uh, uh, should not be uh, just raised against them. And those uh, companies who do not deal with uh, uh, liquor or tobacco uh, because they are not they are not our targets so these companies who are in line with this criteria can uh, uh, apply for um, the participation of the program so they come to us to the bank and the bank uh, uh, sends us uh, well, certain documents so we check them and sign and uh, our client pays our, our insurance premium for that. And so not an insurer pays, but uh, the insured one. So this is their um, payment uh, that includes a commission 1.75%. Um, and uh, so this is the interest, and uh, uh, it is a lump sum. And uh, it is also then spent on the foundation activity and uh, uh, surety bonding. Uh, we have different programs, and uh, uh, so the Moscow government is interested in uh, sustaining uh, a real, real sector and uh, industry, such as construction, innovations, architecture. For them, uh, we have maximum financing volumes up to uh, 70 million rubles, and uh, so uh, this is the maximum. Uh, bonding and up to 70% of the loan we are ready to cover. So those who work in education, tourism, uh, it's uh, up to 50 million rubles and 60% of loan we will cover by our bonds. So and so the enterprises uh, which are very frequent uh, in this city, such as our commercial and uh, service uh, commercial companies and service companies, so we cover up to 50% of the loan. And uh, we also are actively uh, give our, um, our surety against bank guarantees because there are so small and medium businesses are supported uh, uh, by uh, governmental uh, orders. And, and here, always bank guarantees should be in place. and. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and against the fulfillment of the contract obligations, and banks participate intensively in this. They may also ask uh, our uh, bonding here. Uh, so here we uh, can give about 50% of the loan and about $60 million. And um, uh, there, are, there are some uh, banks who promote this very intensively. And uh, um, uh, some other banks also just encourage this. Uh, uh, so l last year, we paid quite a sum for is uh, surety bonding, but we never the, 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 no, no payment were made uh, because a state a governmental order, it is a prestigious order for a company, and they try not to fail to ful and fulfill their obligations, so uh, we didn't pay any compensation. Um, so I hope that uh, we will follow this trend and we plan uh, uh, surety for 6 million rubles and 60 million against bank guarantees, and if it's a good trend, and we will uh, correct this plan up uh, towards uh, a rise. And uh, um, in terms of in terms of uh, the fact that these businesses are related, 
Now we consider it to be uh, some kind of financing of financial risks, and we invite all businesses of Moscow, small businesses of Moscow, um, to use this uh, financing service. So we uh, cooperate with uh, insurers and with our clients through the bank and through the internet. So I hope that we will establish good relations with banks and that will be a good channel of interacting with enterprises in the future. And uh, uh, we believe um, that our quasi-insurance activity is useful and practicable, and I hope that more and more enterprises will come to us and participate in our programs. Uh, well, that's about all, and if any questions, uh, I'll uh, happily take them. Um, Vladislav, so I represent a trade company, so we are Oh, we are a micro business and we actually deal with uh, governmental contracts. So we try to get the uh, uh, surety bond uh, and uh, 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 in two companies, MSP Bank and in some other, he doesn't remember the name. So we also addressed this bear bank uh, and the an answer was that they cannot credit us through uh, an advice to go to these foundations. So people and banks don't know about your program. It's a fact. So when, uh, when uh, I approach the Bank of Moscow, they said that uh, uh, the guarantee will be 20% at most. No, not from the contract, uh, from the order, but from the loan. Uh, so the, the foundation guarantee will be not more than 20 percent. Uh, so 50 percent is just written, but uh, in practice it is not more than 20 percent. Then um, where is the, your question? Uh, what to do? What should t t trade businesses do which do not have any security because everything is in a turnover and we have only revenues? Well, I forgot to mention uh, our partners, our largest partners as regards loans and loan guarantees. There's the Bank of Moscow, Sberga Bank, uh, and Promsvyaz Bank. Uh, as regards the guarantees or surety bonds, uh, these are medium banks, and uh, which uh, which understood rather fast that it is interesting to uh, to do this business and develop it uh, vigorously. For instance, it is an investor bank and some other medium banks. Their guarantees are also accepted by federal and municipal authorities against uh, governmental contracts. Uh, so, so that was a situation when a bank uh, you applied to uh, hasn't uh, ripened to the level of an active cooperation in this area. So and today we discussed it with our co-founder that um, uh, this um, governmental, pro the governmental program should certainly uh, should be supplied with uh, information on what we do. Uh, so b because uh, businesses should know what are the most active banks banks in this program and so on. So Sberbank is still not ready to it. It is a huge bank. And when it's ready, he will uh, certainly push out everybody from this market. Um, but uh, uh, we have a very good cooperation with the uh, Moscow uh, bank. Uh, and uh, it is a local um, subsidiary of Sberbank. But, but um, I recommend to get in touch with uh, us and uh, we will inform you on the list of banks who actively cooperate with us. Um, yes, if the bank is not 
not uh, confident in you, we won't be able to help you. So you uh, should uh, show the transparency of your business to make it absolutely visible. And if the contract is good and it, it will pass through a bank, so this bank uh, uh, will certainly uh, give for this guarantee for our surety bond. And uh, um, well, we are going to be very proactive and open and um, like a shop window for clients. Um, uh, just we will uh, inform on our partners and our programs and even give uh, some limits on certain products, uh, some discounts for certain products. But uh, I think that uh, that's, uh, to, uh, that you should uh, today, you should just come to us. If there are no questions, thank you for the participation of this panel. Thank you very much. And this panel is over. Thank you. Goodbye.